Hi, I'm Amy Romeo from Amy Romeo Crafts. And today in this video, I'll be showing you how to make these cute Santa's milk and cookie earrings using faux leather, heat transfer vinyl, and Cricut. So if you're ready to learn how to make this project, let's go ahead and get started. The SVG file for this project is available in my shop. It's part of my holiday faux leather crafting event where I'm sharing a brand new holiday SVG and video tutorial every day for 20 days. I'll leave a link on the screen for you so you can get the SVG or you can visit amyromeo.com slash holiday to see all of the event's designs. Let's go over the tools and materials we'll be using to make this project. I'll be using the Cricut Maker today, but you can use any of the current Cricut machines, which is both Explore machines, both Joy machines, or the Maker 3, because they all come standard with the fine point blade, which is what we'll be using to cut our faux leather today. So this project has two elements. There's a faux leather base, for the milk glass and the cookie, and then we'll be applying heat transfer vinyl on top. You could also make this project with permanent vinyl if you chose. So I have some assorted colors here, which I'll walk you through as we're making our project. The brown is for the cookie, and then there's a matte silver for the glass, some colors of heat transfer vinyl, and then I'll also be putting a back on the faux leather just to make the earrings have a little more structure and to look finished and professional. Then we'll be cutting the faux leather on the purple strong grip cutting mat and the heat transfer vinyl on a green standard grip cutting mat. If you're using either of the Cricut Joy machines, you can use the green Joy mats that came with your machine. To press the heat transfer vinyl onto the faux leather, I'll be using the Easy Press Mini on the low setting, which is that first green line. I have a cover sheet. This is a Teflon sheet that I've trimmed down to size. You could also use butcher paper or parchment paper. And then I have a heat pressing pad to protect my surface. Some other tools we'll be using, some blue painter's tape, some craft scissors. I also like to have some detail scissors on hand, like these curved scissors, or you could use embroidery scissors. And you'll wanna have a weeding tool of your choice, a hook or a pin pen. Then the Cricut is going to cut the holes, the earring holes in our faux leather for us. But if we need to, we can always use a 1 16th inch hole punch to help punch through those holes and I'll have all of my materials linked for you. So I'll show you how to get these. I love having one of these on hand for making a lot of earrings. They're very inexpensive and they make a great size earring hole. For the actual earrings, we'll use two pair of flat nose jewelry making pliers to attach our earring hooks. I'm just using regular shepherd's hooks and then also some six millimeter jump rings. So let's hop over into Design Space and I'll show you how to prepare our mats to cut. So starting with a blank canvas in Cricut Design Space, you'll click on Upload and then Upload Image and you'll browse to where the unzipped SVG files are for this project on your device. Click on it to select it and then click Open and you'll see a preview of the earring shapes here. Click on Upload, select it from your recent uploads row and then click Add to Canvas. So on your canvas, you'll see there are two versions of the earring designs. The only difference is one has a pre-cut earring hole and one does not. The way to choose which one to use is if you're going to keep the earrings sized the way they are, then you want to go with the pre-cut earring hole version. If you want to change your earring size drastically, that will also change your earring hole size. And then that might make it difficult to attach your earring hooks. So then you would want to use the without holes version and create your own holes. You can do that either with an earring hole punch, which I'll show you, or I have a video that I'll link for you that shows you how to create your own earring holes in your designs in design space. Also, you could use this version if, for example, you wanted to cut these and make them into stickers or put them on a t-shirt, something like that. So I'm gonna use the with holes version. So I'm going to ungroup my designs here so I can delete the shapes that I don't want to use off of my canvas. And then you can see that this design has five basic layers. The cookie has a bottom faux leather layer and then we'll cut the chocolate chips from heat transfer vinyl. And then the milk and cookies has three layers, that silver for the glass, the white for the milk, and then red for the straw and the S. So the S is for Santa but I did wanna show you, in case you did not wanna cut the S, let me show you how to cut the red and white for the straw, but not the S. And the way we do that is using the contour feature. So if you click on contour down here, it will pop up this menu, and this is gonna show us all of the shapes that are going to cut on the selected layer. 
So if I wanted to hide the S, see how it's a dark gray? I can click on it and that turns it a light gray. You can see here also it's changed the appearance in the contour panel. And here you, you can see a little sneak peek back here, the S is gone. So you would just X out of this menu and the S would be gone and then you could use the text tool to add your own letter or whatever you wanted. But let me turn that little S back on. There we go. So we don't need to make any changes to the size. We'll go ahead and click the Make It button. We're cutting our materials on a mat. And now Design Space will separate out each layer for us. The first thing we want to do is go and click through and click Mirror on each of our mats. And that's because faux leather and heat transfer vinyl cut in reverse. If you wanted to use permanent vinyl for this project instead of heat transfer vinyl, that's fine. In that case, you would not mirror the permanent vinyl mats, you would only mirror heat transfer vinyl mats. So we've mirrored each mat. Let me go back in here and click through. This white will cut from vinyl. I like to drag my shapes apart from the edges of my mat just a little bit. This is a faux leather shape. I'm just gonna go through and drag apart my shapes. While I'm doing this also, I'm making a note of what size little scraps of faux leather and heat transfer vinyl I can use for this project. So this is a great scrap buster project. For the cookie, for example, I'll be able to use just a little two inch square of brown faux leather and so on. Okay, so let's click back on a faux leather mat because I like to cut those first. We'll click continue. And I'll be cutting the faux leather mats today using the faux leather paper thin setting with more pressure. So more pressure. And again, Design Space is showing us all we need is that regular fine point blade. If you don't have faux leather paper thin setting bookmarked as a favorite like I do, you can click on browse all materials and search for it. If you're using the Explore Air 2, you'll need to turn your dial to custom before you can search and find this setting. Then the other mats that I'm cutting from regular heat transfer vinyl, I will use the vinyl setting with default pressure. If you're using different materials, you'll wanna make sure to use your manufacturer's recommended cut settings for your vinyl mats. Okay, so let's hop back over to my overhead camera. We'll start to cut out our earring shapes and I'll show you how to put them together. So I've gone ahead and trimmed small pieces of faux leather down to size. These pieces are just slightly larger than my shapes that are going to cut. And I find that cutting a smaller piece of faux leather and putting it down on your mat with blue painter's tape is gonna be really important to helping you get good cuts. The smaller the piece and the better taped it is, the less it's going to shift and move on your mat while cutting. The other thing I've done is I've trimmed a piece of this foil iron on you could use regular heat transfer vinyl as well. I've trimmed a piece of that to be just slightly smaller than the faux leather piece. So here's the front of the faux leather, here's the shiny side of the foil iron-on, and we are going to press this onto the back of the faux leather before we cut. I've done that for both the cookie and for the milk layer. And I have my Easy Press Mini set to that low setting. And all we're going to do is place these two back to back, cover with your cover sheet, and then we're gonna press all over for about 10 seconds. And now that we've pressed that onto the back, what we wanna do is keep the faux leather pretty flat on your surface, and then just try and lift up the edge of that clear carrier sheet on top of the foil and peel. If as you're peeling, the vinyl lifts up, just place it right back down and press some more. That looks pretty good, and you can start to see the texture of the, the faux leather coming through the back of the foil iron-on, and that tells us that we've done a good job pressing those two pieces together. So now I'm going to just cover again without that clear cover sheet in the way, and just press for a few more seconds. And you can see that texture coming through even more, and that looks pretty good. The reason it's so important to get this foil iron-on onto the back of the faux leather is as the blade cuts through, if there's any gaps or air spaces between these two materials, then it will rip or tear your foil iron on, which you don't want. So this is warm. I'm gonna put it here underneath my heat pressing pad just to cool in a flat position. And I'm going to repeat that process for my cookie.
Okay, so now our little piece of cookie faux leather has that foil iron on on the back. The nice thing about this is we're using two different faux leathers for the front, but the earrings will look like a set because we have that foil iron on on the back. I have a video about four different ways to put it back on faux leather earrings. This method happens to be my favorite, but if you wanna check out some other ways, I'll leave a link to that video for you. Adding some foil iron on on the back or heat transfer vinyl is optional, but it does add some structure, as I said, to your earrings so they're not as floppy and it just makes the backs look more finished. Also, it creates a matching set, in this case when you're using two different materials. Okay, so we're gonna put our piece face down on our purple Strong Grip cutting mat, right in that spot that we saw on the mat preview screen. And then I'm going to use just a few small pieces of blue painter's tape and tape this down on all sides. We have our faux leather paper thin setting with more pressure all set to go. So we'll just load the mat into the Cricut and begin the cut. So the cut is complete, but I don't want to unload the mat yet. I want to check the cut first because I can always rerun the cut as needed as long as I haven't unloaded the mat. So I'm going to use my hook weeding tool and just use it and kind of get up under the edge of the faux leather and see if it went all the way through. And I know that's hard to see, but I'm just sort of lifting up the edge. That looks pretty good, but I'm going to rerun the cut one more time just to be sure. The way to do that is to press the cut button on the Maker or the Explore machines. On the Cricut Joy, the option to rerun the cut will be on your screen in Design Space. So we'll just check again because we can repeat that cut as many times as needed. But that looks pretty good. So we'll go ahead and unload the mat and remove that cookie shape. There we go. Now the hole that the Cricut cut is at the top. You can use your sharp weeding tool to kind of poke through the hole. If the hole didn't go through all the way, don't worry. We can use that 1 16th inch hole punch just to clean up the hole. And I think I will do that in this case. A lot of times putting the iron on on the back does impact the ability to make the hole go all the way through for some reason, but don't worry about that. So do you see how there's a little bit of rippling on the edges all around? That's just because of the foil iron on on the back when we cut. So I'm just gonna press that out, press those ridges out after I cut the milk shape. So I've just reused the blue painter's tape from this cut and placed it over here. Blue painter's tape can be reused several times before you need to throw it away. So I'm ready to cut out the milk glass. We'll load this into the machine and cut. So as I mentioned, I'm just gonna press for a few seconds to get those little ridges off of the back. See how much flatter the edges are now? Okay. I'm gonna set these aside and now I'm going to cut the vinyl mats for the milk, the chocolate chips, and also the straw and the S for Santa. Okay, so I've cut out all of my vinyl layers and now it's time to start pressing. What I will do before we press is I will use my 1 16th hole punch just to punch those earring holes all the way through. And this is very easy to use. It works just like a paper punch. What I'm going to do is use the little mark that the Cricut made for the hole. I'm just gonna line up the hole punch there and squeeze. There we go. I'll repeat for the cookie. Okay, so for the cookie, all we need to do is place the chocolate chip layer. On top of that little cookie layer, we'll cover and we'll press for about 10 seconds. Isn't that cute? Now this is warm, so again, I'll put it underneath my heat pressing pad so that it cools nice and flat. And we'll move on to our little milk glass. So the first layer we want to place is the 
white layer with the straw. And I'm just placing that white layer so that there's a little bit of space all around the edges, a nice even border of that faux leather on all sides. So I'm just holding that faux leather flat and peeling away the carrier sheet. Remember, if as you're peeling, the vinyl lifts up, just place it right back down and press. Then we'll just add our red layer. And here you want to take a moment just to line up the red of those little straw stripes. And when you do that, your S should pop into place. So the last thing to do is just attach our earring hooks. And before we attach the earring hooks, we need to turn the bottom loop of the earring hook 90 degrees so that our earrings will hang straight. So the bottom loop of the earring hook is now parallel with the earring hook. What we want to do is turn that sideways. And the way to do that is to grip the hook between your thumb and your forefinger so it's very secure. And then use some flat nose pliers to grip that hook and just turn with your wrist. And now our loop is facing forward. Let me show you the difference. So this is before and then this is after. So repeat with your other hook. Now all we need to do is use six millimeter jump rings to connect our earring pieces to the earring hooks. The way I open jump rings, I like to put the opening of the jump ring facing up at the 12 o'clock position. And then I like to grip with one pair of jewelry making pliers on the left hand side at the nine o'clock position, and then one at the three o'clock position, and then just twist open. You don't wanna open up the jump ring and make an oval. You want to try and keep it in a circle shape. So the way you do that is just to very carefully twist open without distorting the shape. Then we'll just put on our little earring piece, attach the earring hook, and close that jump ring right back up. And that's it. Our Santa's milk and cookie earrings are complete. I hope you enjoyed this project. And if you want to see the rest of the 20 projects I've created for the faux leather holiday crafting event, I'll leave a link to a playlist for you so you can check them out. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.